this is Brenda Starr with Backstage 360 here at the Brick by Brick in San Diego with Luca Torelli, all the way from Italy. How you doing? Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with you tonight. Awesome. So, uh, nice Italian name. It seems like all the Italian names end in, in I, huh? Or a vowel. <laughs> Is this yeah, true? Yes. Almost. No, now many Italian fathers and mothers, they try to, to go more international, no? So you find uh, all the kind of name from the soap operas, from the so the American soap operas, no? So you find all the different names, really, no? But the usual name, of course, is Mario, Luca, Giovanni, Matteo, you know? Right. So, of course. So you're from Italy, yes. and I know Alessandro uh, Conte, your singer, is also from Italy. But some of the other, they're all everybody's from Europe, but um, some from other countries. Is that correct? Yes. There is uh, Alex Landenburg, that is our drummer from Germany. Then we have uh, my second guitar player, Dominique Lerken, that is from Annecy, France. And uh, the same, Patrice, our best player. So we are two French, one German, and two Italians. Oh, fantastic. Okay. And you've just released your second album with this lineup, is that correct? Absolutely. Why? Should I change? <laughs> you ask me like... <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So your band is called... Luca Torelli's Rapacy, right? Okay, and so there was the original Rapacy, right? Yes. And then uh, you guys had a friendly split, which is uh, just a natural thing that happens in life. Like, think of in biology, the cells, they split and then evolve and go in their own direction uh, and each yes, come but unique. I want to be clear, for me that is very important. So we've, we're speaking about the split even some years, five, six years before, it really happened. So for us, it was important to, to end this uh, artistic journey represented by the saga that I created ly lyrically and musically. So in the end, for us, it was important to arrive at the album number 10 that was representing the final chapter of this saga. And so the split happened later no? in a friendly way, but for us, it was important to finish what we started in 1997. So it took 15 years. In the end, I think no other band in the in the world, probably a couple, you can count them on the on your fingers, made it the same, no? Because uh, I don't know really so many bands out there starting a concept, uh, bringing it uh, onwards for uh, ten albums. But we did it. We were proud of it. For us, it was the first thing, independently, even if we didn't have the like the will to work uh, together so much in the last years, because then the things change, like you say. At first, you are young, you go to the house of the keyboard player, you compose everything in there, you stay 12 hours per day working, but then life changes, you grow, and all this, no? So it was normal in the end, it was not like in the very beginning. But for us, it was very important to finish everything. This was the priority. Okay. And then, now, we proceeded to the friendly split, everybody with his own Rhapsody. And uh, at first, I, I was not even supposed to go on as a Rhapsody because uh, they asked me, a record company asked me to go for a project, music project in the style of uh, Avantasia, you know, the famous band with multiple singers. Uh, but then when I found Alessandro, the new singer, that I found it thanks to Fabio, my old singer, uh, I decided, wow, I can go on with Rhapsody because he gives me the possibility to, to compose songs very different, what for me is very important as a Rhapsody composer, no? I can make, write a song about, uh, I don't know, metaphysics, another about uh, whatever, no? So, uh, an, a singer that he is able to offer different vocal colors uh, gives the, to the composer the possibility to compose in an unlimited way, you know? And that is very important when you want, through your music, to express heart and soul. That's the main thing, no? Yeah, a lot of heart and soul goes into that. Yeah, yes. Rhapsody, I think they are very special because our message is a message of light, love, respect. Sometimes we clash with the, uh, how to say, the, the typical, uh, how to say, metal uh, uh, beliefs. I don't know, no? But uh, we were always considered a kind of uh, band very particular in this sense, no? Because uh, if you come on our tour bus, you find the same people that, you, uh, you know, we are at home. Uh, so 
absolutely no drugs, sex and rock and roll for us. For us it's really the will to give a message, very positive. And the music always, when I compose the music, for me is a kind of write a hymn to life in some way. So that's the basic thing for us. Right, it's uh, more enlightened music. Yeah, yeah, but you know, as we are a band, everybody's married. We, most of us, they don't drink, uh, don't smoke. I, I want to live a healthy life. I practice yoga, meditation, what is essential for your spiritual evolution, no? Mm -hmm. And um, so then, uh, you know, when you live uh, with a certain vibration, uh, then you cannot live in mm -hmm. another way. You really, it's like when you, when you, your, your body doesn't stand alcohol and you try to get drunk at all costs, you know, but you, you do, but your physics rejects it, no? So for us, it's the same thing, no? So that's very important, I think. That's why with the music, we try also to, to offer some kind of vibrations. And, and it was amazing because uh, I did a special work on the Prometheus album about this, no? Including some frequencies very particular. And it was great when I, we had these VIP meetings to know that many people have this kind of uh, first step of Kundalini experience. And this happens because with the music, uh, the music is an incredibly powerful way of communicating, you know, uh, through this exchange of energy. Fantastic. Some, some of your songs are um, also in Italian, right? The, yes. the lyrics are in Italian? Uh, of course, because me, of course, I write much, I write much uh, better in Italian. I can really speak about this kind of themes, metaphysics and so on in a deeper way. Uh, in English it's a little bit different, not my mother language. So of course uh, you can find some difficulties when you want to express some specific concepts no, that are not already in your mother language is not easy to, to express. So you can imagine. But um, so in the Italian, yes, because I was very good at school in, in Italian, right? In Italian, in my mother language. And um, so I like really to have this possibility, no, to write also in different languages, also in Latin, no, there are many parts in Latin, but these are not mainly composed by me, created by me, but I took them from, uh, from historical books, uh, things like that, no, because I like to have this kind of connection with such important uh, uh, text, ancient text. In some ways, are you ahead of your time? So, uh, <laughs> no, I think now is the right moment for the world now to change uh, frequency in some way. And uh, because what we see around us you know, is not that uh, particularly good, no? So it's just great, you know, through music to, to find a way to... The new earth. To align yourself, yes, to the, to the, to the good, the positive vibration. Yeah. Are you familiar with The New Earth, the book by Eckhart Tolle? Sorry, sorry? Are you familiar with The New Earth, a book by Eckhart Tolle? Ah, of course, Eckhart Tolle, of course. Okay, I, I started from all that, but then you know what? You can read 1,000 books. Doesn't mean anything. Uh, you have to experiment on yourself. You, you don't have to believe what the people say because everybody, based on his level of consciousness, can reach a, a different spiritual experience. No? So you reach the one that is good for you if you want to go for it, no? if you feel the need. Some people don't feel the need. There is not even need to speak to them no? because it's just not the right moment for them. You don't have to force the people. I don't like this, ah, oh, you have to do this, ah, oh, you don't know how it is. No, it has to arrive your moment and then you can really decide to do it and then you do it with the greater energy possible and you reach the real results. And then all the books that you read, you put them there because you know that you have all the power inside that you can really do everything, no? Uh, so you, you are light, so you can decide you know, how to play with darkness and light. And luckily the man with low vibration uh, do what uh, is reserved to the low vibration, so we see the results you know, every day. But if you feel that this is wrong, that there is something you cannot live with it, then this is the moment that you need really to to explore yourself and understand there is something better for every one of us. Right. Like the megahertz, right? Within the music and the binaural beats, yeah, do you work yeah, with that? Of course, of yeah. course, of course. But to me, it started with meditation, but then I discovered really another aspect of life since when, uh, thanks to some uh, yoga practice, this Kundalini, you know, the real, it was really hard because it's a really hard technique. And uh, at first I, I was feeling very bad because you have to kind of uh, purify yourself from all the shit that you have inside, sorry. But it's true, no? all the bad things, all the bad emotional things that you collected inside yourself from the beginning until your adult age. No? 
and um, and what I was saying, yes. And then um, and then uh, suddenly many things happened to me that made me discover another aspect of life. So you start seeing things new, hearing new things, uh, uh, contacting another side of life that before you didn't know about. No, at first you can be scary, but then you discover that this is what is expected to every one of us sooner or later in our evolution. No, so then uh, you understand which is the truth. You understand what is real, what is fake in this life. Uh, you see many people fake around you, you know, the kind of this. But more you explore this and you raise your vibration, more you understand this, no? So you get immediately the feelings, you get, uh, sometimes you have vision, sometimes you have... So that's why also when uh, some scientists still say, you know, because there is always this uh, fight between science and metaphysics, uh, you know, this, no? Uh, they say just, ah, this is bullshit, things like this. I would say, Ma, did you try? Did you try to start there meditating, take 30 minutes per day, every day for yourself, to explore yourself, understand more about yourself and so about the rest of the world, no? Because then you, otherwise you just hear about external things, what they discovered, what was there, what was there. It's just great, you say, but fantastic, but you don't leave it inside yourself. And you can instead leave it inside yourself, you know? So that opens a new perspective for your life and improves your way of living, of course. Because when you know the things, you, you can control the things. Otherwise, you, you, you are a kind of a, um, an object, you know? Right. You live like a totally influenced by the energy of the other people, of the... You, you know what I mean? So you have to get the control of the things. Also of your darkness that you have inside. No, We have light and darkness, but when we are able to control it, then is the first step yeah. to avoid well, the awareness. In a positive yeah, way. awareness. Absolutely. So tell me about your father. He was a big influence in your life? Yeah, of course, gen genetically, I would say, because he, was, he passed away when I was two years old only. No? But he was a player of cello in an important orchestra in my hometown in Italy. And uh, so, of course, genetic, no? It's easy to understand. But then it was also that my mother loved so much classical music, Mozart, Beethoven, Bach, Paganini, Vivaldi. And so putting, uh, I think, the uh, LP, the vinyl, no? Every day like this, then you absorb also, no? We absorb the music that we listen. So in some way, I like then uh, when I started composing by myself to to connect the classical music, the symphonic aspect of the classical music, very epic, very emotional, to the heavy rock, no? And that, uh, that's the way how it was born, really, Rhapsody music. Then I discovered the soundtrack music of the movies, Hollywood, the uh, world of cinema, and so for me, that became the classical music 2.0, you know? And that was the main influence from when I discovered it until now. And that's why also in the next album uh, of Rhapsody, uh, we will go on with this cinematic metal, how it was defined by our label, by me, because it really represents what we want to do, no? the connection between heavy rock and the, the really the typical soundtracks, uh, sound of the movies of Hollywood, the big action movies, whatever, there is no limit. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's wonderful. Well, thanks so much for sharing all of that. And uh, you know, we'll put some links up to where people can find out more absolutely. and get thank your you so tour dates and everything else. So thank you so much. It's Thanks been a so pleasure. This is Brenda Starr with Backstage 360 at Brick by Brick signing off. Thanks so much.